state of Washington don't much like each other, especially now. The Huskies are top dogs. The Ducks hope to make them roll over. We come to you today from the campus of the University of Washington. We are here in Seattle, Washington, and yes, the Oregon Ducks would like nothing more than to get the hometown Huskies to roll over. Other side of that coin for the dogs is they would prefer to just sit and stay right where they are atop the Pac-10 Conference. This is Pac-10 Conference College Hoops presented by KFC. It's the Oregon Ducks and the Washington Huskies. And the Huskies in first place, nine up and three down. UCLA is getting beaten up down in Tucson today by the Arizona Wildcats. So if the Huskies can hold serve here, they will increase their lead in the Pac-10 Conference. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with my partner, the coach, Dan Belwamity, who, by the way, <laughs> playing a little bit hurt today. Little hurt. He's got the high vocal sprain. <laughs> but the simple fact is, I think there's a tendency, Dan, to think about John Brockman when you think about the Huskies. The fact is, it's the backcourt that's really getting it done. A dynamic backcourt for the Huskies. And Barry, look, Isaiah Thomas could be the freshman of the year. Justin Denman could be the player of the year. And how about Vanoy Overton, who I think will be the sixth man of the year. So why do you win in college basketball? A great backcourt, and the Huskies have it. All right, let's talk about Oregon. They got a good backcourt, too, and one day they really light it up in Tuan Porter. Well, I love Porter. I mean, Porter is a young man that can shoot it from deep and he can come off screens and hurt you. So you've got to get up on him. You've got to force him to drive to the goal because he's a prolific perimeter shooter. And of course, every coach that we have talked to prior to playing this Oregon Ducks team just preaches and preaches. You've got to get up on Tawan Porter. If you're going to shut him down, you might be able to shut the Ducks down. Teams have been able to do that. The Ducks still looking for that first win of the Pac-10 conference season. A lot of people feel that once they get that, they might get a couple more. But they got a load to deal with today in the Washington Huskies, who are the sum of the parts. Not only good players, but a very good basketball team. Huskies and dogs. Whoa. No. And we welcome you to Bank of America Arena here in Seattle, Washington, the Washington Huskies and the Oregon Ducks. And let's take a look at the lineups first of all for the visitors from Eugene. It'll be Jovan Catron with Michael Dunnigan getting a start once again, a freshman. Garrett Sim in the backcourt with Porter, about whom we spoke, and LaKendrick Longmire. And they are coached by Ernie Kenton. Ernie keeping his head up, had a smile on his face when we saw him yesterday and very confident that somewhere along the line, his team will turn the corner. It has been a very, very tough year. And Ernie, of course, says, best thing about freshmen, next year they're sophomores. Let's talk about the Washington Huskies. Quincy Pondexter having a huge junior year and one of the reasons for the Huskies' success with a talented freshman, Darnell Gant. He's a rebounder, John Brockman, Detman and Thomas in the backcourt, and of course, we will see Overton. And Lorenzo Romar in his seventh year as the head coach here at Washington, you could see a, a winning record, 137 up and just 78 down. And this is a good team today and will be a good team again tomorrow here is our suzuki game plan well barry for oregon no scoring lapses let's clamp down on defense for the huskies they've got so many guys that have a hot hand give it to one of them and the big thing with washington very good rebounding team second efforts let's get around the glass make some some solid scores inside off your rebounding yeah rebounding really a big thing as you look at justin Demon coming off a 28 point game the other night against oregon state Washington, number one rebounding team in the Pac-10. Oregon, number 10 rebounding team in the Pac-10. Oregon plus nine, or rather Washington plus 9.3 rebounds a game, and Oregon minus three. So that'll be a big factor. They will pay special attention to Porter, and they let him go right there. Porter could not get it to go down. Brockman fights for the rebound, tries to save, and can't. Great look, though. Mm, nice look on the, on the first possession uh, for the Ducks. Brockman went hard into the stands and only now comes back onto the court. He defines the term tough guy, though, I'll tell you that. Yeah, he really does. And, and John made a good effort to go get it and then, you know, kind of went into the third row. So second chance right off the bat here for the Ducks. 
And Barry, of course, Huskies man to man. This is Longmire. Now Porter, Denton working on Porter. A look at Dunnigan, and Thomas just takes it away. Denton ahead of everybody to the basket. All right, Oregon, Barry really has to be efficient. That's right. right. Run your motion, and you've got to get some quality shots. Very good no call there a moment ago. There's Longmire. Now, Longmire is a guy they need to step up. He's got to carry some of the scoring load. Sim, another guy they want to get to shoot a little bit more. 13 on the shot clock for the Ducks. Crowd here at Bank of America Arena on its feet and will stay that way until the Ducks make a basket. That's something they borrowed from the University of Arizona. Yeah, shot clock now. Got to be alert. Got four on the shot, and they're going to say Sim stepped on the baseline. Step out of bounds, watching the ball. Really important for Oregon to keep the crowd out of this. I know we talk about that all the time, but this again has become one of the more notorious places for a visiting team in the Pac-10. If they get the crowd involved, that's a problem for Oregon. This is Thomas, the freshman, and a guy who was a prime candidate, in my opinion, the freshman of the year in the Pac-10 conference. Erosion had a pretty good game. Yes, he did. Yeah, he played well. Yeah, there's a lot of good freshmen. We always talk about Clay Thompson, Erosion. Oh, yeah, Clay Thompson. Drew Holiday at UCLA. What a game he had against the Oregon Ducks, Clay Thompson. Gant. And how about the rebound by Brockman? Throws it up and won't go. Pondexter gets it back and scores. Now, uh, Barry, we talk about rebounding differential. And the Huskies, fourth in the country in rebound differential. Pretty good Third time. turnover, and how unselfish was that? And we've talked about Isaiah Thomas and what great control he has with his body and strength going to the basket. Finishes that. And it's a six-love ball game, and that's exactly what the Ducks did not want to happen. Well, on the rebound, look, look at Pondexter, second and third efforts around the glass. And pretty good in transition. Isaiah awesome. Thomas, strong, powerful with the left hand going to the goal. And for Oregon, the other side of that coin, three possessions, three turnovers. So the Ducks just kind of mired where they've been for most of this conference season. They've just not been able to get away early. They squandered some leads that they've had and have hit these long lapses. That was one of the things you pointed out in the in the Suzuki report. And you can see what the Huskies have done at home. Of course, they've won 13 out of 14 here. And, and as we've said, this has become one of the toughest places in the Pac-10 Conference for a visiting team. Never used to be like that here at Heckhead. What used to be Heckhead, now Bank of America Arena. Now Dunnigan trying to get around Brockman. That's not easily done. Dunnigan again has to shoot a fall away, and they'll give him that shot all day long. Dunnigan, Dunnigan a guy, of course, and we've talked about this, Dan, who in high school, superstar in high school, catch, dunk, block shots, not quite as easy at this level. No, and, and Michael went to Farragut Academy and, and you know, quite frankly, as it's, um, coaching staff at Oregon will tell you, you know, he needs, when he came out to play at Oregon, got to work harder. It was too easy for him in high school, and he's learning, but it's going to take him at least another year. Thomas, a little pump fake, and take it all the way to the tip. The Ducks rarely get back to the basket scoring. Another turnover. Yeah. Well, I've gone from bad to worse here for the Ducks. Pitching a shutout here so far, Barry. Never seen that in college basketball. <laughs> no. Here's the pump fake. Look at this move here. Just take it all the way in and a good move. Kind of slithering on the baseline. 
This is a very efficient Washington team. They can beat you inside, they can beat you outside, and they're lately beating you with their defense. Yeah, that's what I really like about them. I mentioned this in the open. They're the sum of the parts. Thomas scores. No. Offensive foul. That, that looked pretty darn good to me. Well, was Katron moving? I think he had good position. I thought, I, I thought very good call. Nice defensive play by Jovan Katron. Well, on that replay, it looked like he may have been a little bit. But I think he was there in time. This is Cameron Brown in the ball game for the first time now for the Ducks. Dunnigan again tries to back drop well, him down, and that well, time faces now, him up. Now, that's what the Ducks need. Proactive, nice jump hook. That was a heck of a move by Dunnigan. Dentman coming off a screen, can't get it to go. Nice play from behind by Gant. <laughs> Dentman tried to throw it up over his head. Pardon me? Yeah. <laughs> Would have been spectacular. Would have been highlight film stuff. Porter coming the other way, all the way, and he got it around Pondexter, but he couldn't get it to fall. Thomas tries to save. Porter gets it back and a foul. Well, from Tucson today, Final score, and it wasn't as bad as the game might have been. 84 to 72 at one point, Arizona led that game by 25, I believe. How about Arizona? L look at the Arizona Wildcats. My opinion, in the tournament, Barry. In the tournament, they won seven in a row. Great win against Kansas. They beat Gonzaga, UCLA. They're in. Pac-10 tournament right now, five solid, and USC's got a chance to make it six. I think so, too. Yeah, They're five solid. Five five in the tournament. They were talking about how down this conference was, and obviously not so. I, I think uh, I think the Pac-10's got a chance to get six. I think USC's got to do a little bit of business, which they can do, and uh, I'm looking for the conference to get a total of six in the NCAA tournament. I, year. I think it could happen. UCLA, incidentally, have won eight straight games in that series with Arizona until today. And Arizona right now, the hottest team in the Pac-10. How about Nick Wise? Is he playing great? So is Buttinger and so is Hill. Well, Wise had 26 today. Hill had 22. Buttinger had 17. That's about all you need to know. Longmire had a pretty good look. Now he takes it. Can't get it to go. Drop and clears. Here's Thomas. They had Pondexter, but Thomas penetrates again. And we're going to get a foul away from the ball. And we'll take a timeout. 15-39 remaining first half. Dogs lead it by four. Well, last week, our Player of the Week, the U.S. Bank Player of the Week, was Alfred Apoya of the UCLA Bruins. Couple of home wins against USC, and then they just got on all sides of Notre Dame. So our Pac-10 Conference Player of the Week for last week, Alfred Apoya of UCLA. Big week for him and for the Bruins, but Things turned around big time for UCLA this week. A couple of losses on the road at the Arizona schools. Justin Denman, another guy who uh, not only is always in the hunt for player of the week, but starting to be talked about as possible player of the year as well in the Pac-10 Conference, although there is that guy at ASU. Yeah, that guy, James Harden, of course. But Denman, Denman's had an outstanding Pac-10 Conference season. Saw his numbers from Thursday night against Oregon State. This is Ronari Overton, and he too. Remember, this is the guy who started 26 games last year. Again, being just a role player on this team, but an important role. Brockman pulled that one down and just goes baseline, just right around Curtis. He just couldn't finish. Curdle can't handle the pass. And another turnover. Now Pondexter. Nice oh, good pass again. Brian Amening leans in, scores, count it. And that's good news for Matthew Brian Amening because he has been in a kind of a scoring slump. Pretty good play by Brian, by Matthew Brian Ammonins. You said, Barry, he hasn't been scoring as much as he would like, but very effective at the low block. Thomas will take a seat. 
So for the moment, the Huskies will go a little bit bigger with Detman and Overton in the backcourt, Brian Ammoning, Brockman, and Pondexter up front. For Oregon right now, it's Humphrey, Dunnigan, Odia, Porter, and Brown. Ernie Kent is trying to find a combination that can get him some offensive success. I think you look back at Donegan. Did a pretty good move to score. They're going to get blocked when he just hammered <laughs> Donegan down low. Brockman, physical player. Dungan will remember that shot. This is Odia. Won't go and Pondex for the rebound. Brockman scored and won. Powerhouse. I'll say. <laughs> Well, it's a great look, too, by Benoit Overton to try to find Brockman, and of course, he finishes most of the time. I'll say he does. So Brockman will go to the line. The other thing about this Husky team, they get to the free throw line a lot. So Brockman early on, three points, couple of rebounds. Only lost one game here at home, Barry. A triple overtime loss to, to California. Cameron Brown goes end in. -end. And that time gets a little too aggressive on the defensive end and picks up the foul. Well, there's a, a look at Vinoy Overton, and he is our Motel 6 six man of the game. Benoit Overton has come off the bench. He gets a lot of minutes. He played 24 minutes the other night against Oregon State. He is our sixth man of the game. Motel 6, proud sponsor of the Pac-10 Conference. We'll leave the light on for you. Rockham faces up. A little bit short. Rebound down to Brown. Two on three. Dunnigan, if they want him inside, boys, very aggressive between Brian Amity and, and uh, Dunnigan. And they're going to get Brian Amity on the foul. Now Justin Holiday will come into the ball game, and Gant will come in as well for Washington. Pondex will drop it. Will leave. So one of the things I like about Lorenzo Romar's team. I mean they. There's a lot of talent, probably 10 deep on yeah, this team. He, he can, no question, he doesn't go down a lot when the bench comes in. And a lot of role players, as we said. DeWan Porter steps in, the floor, oh, that's about it, but that's going to be goaltending. Good call. Now, Porter can also take it to the basket here. Definitely the ball had reached his apex. A good call by the official. Holiday. Holiday started baseline. Good job by Humphrey to cut him off. Demon. And a whistle blows and a foul going to be called against the Huskies. And they got Matthew Bryan Ammoning and he's picked up a couple of quick ones. Criddle back in the ball game now for the Oregon Ducks. So Ernie Kent now playing both Criddle and Dunnigan. Something he wasn't doing earlier in the year. Only done that about the last eight or nine games. Porter had a look that time, but missed. And Brian Ammoning clears. Fourteen to eight ball game. Huskies over the Ducks. Husky scored the first eight. Since then, things have been pretty even. Gant, yeah, don't let him shoot that. And loose ball controlled by Dentman off the hands of Brown. Nice delivery to Pondexter and a foul. Or rather, to Holiday and a foul. 
Again, second efforts for Washington. Good job to get it off the glass, give themselves multiple attempts. They're going to go goaltending? Uh, Lo Romar wants the goaltending. I, I don't think so. I don't think he's going to get it. Yeah, Detman just does a good job to retrieve it. No, no, that's not goaltending. Definitely the ball was on the way up. Yes. So Justin Holiday will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Justin, of course, the brother of Jeru Holiday at UCLA. Sim will come back and Patron will come back and Criddle and Brown will leave. Criddle and Brown sounds like a law firm. Right? <laughs> Maybe someday. Maybe. <laughs> This young, this young man right here, there, I think, is going to be a very good player for Washington. Very quick and active. Unselfish. Unself and understands the game. Stanford and Cal coming up next. Great Bear area rivalry. This is Humphrey and Gant going to come out and work him. Holiday getting a hand on that once again. It's not an open back because Holiday did get a hand on it. Got seven on the shot clock. Porter going to take it all the way and try to get it up over Gant and couldn't quite do it. Overton comes the other way. I remember he's left handed. Took it all the way with the right hand. Great move to take it to the goal and score. And this time they're going to get Dunnigan on a moving block. And we'll take a timeout. 11.58 remaining first half, and the Huskies in control by nine. We welcome you back. It's a 17 to 8 ball game. Washington over Oregon. They've led right from the get go. Here's where we stand as of the moment in the Pac 10. The Huskies with a one game lead right now over Arizona State and UCLA. Arizona right back in the fray, having defeated UCLA today and beating them in no uncertain terms. And of course, it's been just uh, the kind of year in the Pac 10 that every week things change. And this coming week, Thursday night right here on these same stations you'll be able to see these same Washington Huskies taking on the UCLA Bruins it's presented by KFC a big game in the Pac-10 conference that's, that's going to be a great game and, and UCLA will bounce back and they, they're going to come out a couple of losses this weekend Barry but they'll be ready for the Huskies when they come in on Thursday no question they seem to really play well after a loss actually although they lost at Arizona State the other night and then got spanked today in Tucson and that's going to be a double dribble. So Washington defensively just seems to have Oregon back on its heels. Six turnovers as you see for the Ducks. Right, look at Overton. Nice play. Just split him, and then Brian Anthony couldn't finish it, but it'll go to the line. What a play by Overton. Sure was. They're always looking low, huh? They, they sure are. They, they, they are looking low to high. Anthony just couldn't finalize around the basket, but Overton made it happen. Catron's second personal foul. Yeah, Brian Anthony, Barry, had 41 points in the summer. Played it, played for the um, against the Czech Republic in yeah. and, and the yeah. under 20 league, and you know, so he's a guy that can score. Played for, played for England, of yeah. course, from London. One out of two. Dunnigan runs it down. Oregon right now, six turnovers and only three made field goals. So those are disturbing numbers, I'm sure, for Ernie Kent. A clear out for Cameron Brown. Brown leaves it for Longmire. Now Brown again. High screen and roll. Got to be alert now if you're watching. And Brown takes it all the way, puts it up too hard. Brian Ammoning clears. Here's Overton. And Overton will push it. Tried to <laughs> split him and did, and then has to kick it back to him. An open three. He pounded it. And Cameron Brown went down very hard. He flew at Dentman, and he is slow to get up. Number 
Well, I mean, that's the thing about the Huskies. They just beat you in so many ways. Well, they do. They penetrate and they open it up on the perimeter. Now, Detman has been, this is not a fluke. Justin Detman has been doing this the whole year. I mean, he's a guy that can make a ton of threes coming off a game where he made seven of them. So, I mean, he is somebody that is really devastating from long range. I mean, you could really make a case for Denton as Pac-10 player of the year the way he's playing in the conference. There's starting to be a little groundswell for that. Dunnigan off the window, too short. Fight for the rebound, he's still loose, and it's finally picked up by Holiday. He loses it, now gets it back. Dogs on a 7-0 run here. They go up top for Brockman, can't quite handle under the basket, and Catron clears it for Oregon. Here's Porter, and a good job by Overton to stop Porter. Catron cut off at the baseline. Porter has a wide open three and cannot get it to go, but Catron gets it back, leaves it for Dunnigan for the finish. Beautiful interior pass that time by Catron. Porter, Barry, does not miss many of those. No, sure when he's wide open. And there's a Husky turnover as Brockman was making a cut to the basket and Detman threw it where he was. Pondexter's going to come back for the Huskies and Holiday will leave. Overton comes out. And Isaiah Thomas comes back for Lorenzo Romo. And again, Overton, very solid minutes. See if he can do anything right here. Faced up. Scored. Look. Now, he is playing effectively this afternoon. Good job by, by uh, Michael Dunnigan. Thomas trying to penetrate again. See Barry if they reward him the next time down. Let's find Dunnigan again if you're the Ducks. Warren scored eight points off of four UW turnovers. Now Brockman. Spin move from Dunnigan. Great move, he just didn't finish. Huskies have missed a couple of cripples right at the basket. This is soon. Catron. I would think they'd let Catron shoot that shot on night too. Or right, four on one here to the basket. Should be easy. The rejection by Catron is not going to matter. Foul call, but put Pondexter at the line. Call that foul on Catron. That's his third personal foul, so I would expect that he will sit for the better part of the half, if not all of it. Still 8.47 to go. And now Criddle will come back, and he'll bring Churchill O'Deal with him. Ron Dexter has had, as we mentioned earlier, a solid junior year. Both ends of the floor. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, he's really brought into what Lorenzo Romar is doing here. He's playing much more under control. He's looking like a player. Good pass that time. And Longmire has it rejected by Brian Ammoning, and he controls the ball. Now Thomas. Thomas goes behind his back, takes it all away. Boy, how do you like it? <laughs> how about Isaiah Thomas? <laughs> little behind the back, little stutter dribble. Powerful to the rim. And finish with the right hand. He's a left hand. This is Criddle. Backs down Brian Ammoning. Good help that time by the Huskies. Ball still loose and finally snagged by Longmire. Longmire throws it up and drops it in. Thomas again, penetration that time. Porter got a hand on it, turnover. Three on two for the Ducks. Sim in the middle, Longmire on the wing to the back. Oh, well executed. Good, good pass by Sim that time. Timeout Washington. You can't get can't get complacent if you're the Huskies. No, that's exactly right. And, I, and I'm sure that's something that Lorenzo Romo was concerned about. We did talk to him about it yesterday, and he said, you know, you got to be concerned. But sometimes, you know, the difference between giving lip service to that and having it actually happen is another thing. 
Look at this at this end. Brian Hammond gets high, got a finger on it, and controlled it. Yeah, he kept it in play. And, and look at the, the bucket here by, by Isaiah Thomas. Just a great job. And Oregon right back at you on the three-on-one and a good finish all the way to the goal. And a nice job that time by LeKendrick Longmire. Oregon right now on an 8-4 run, but still trail the dogs by nine. Now, I want to take a moment to... Uh, Give a big shout out to Jeannie Havercroft who is watching this game down in Eugene. Uh, an absolute favorite of Ernie Kent, an absolute favorite of Oregon Duck fans everywhere. Uh, Ernie was telling us how uh, she helped him and Stu Jackson so much when they were players. She's been like a mom to this team, to so many. And Ernie says, you know, she helped me as a coach. She's the biggest Duck fan, he said. And fighting a big battle right now down in Eugene watching the game we know and uh, we want to pass along both Ernie and the Oregon Ducks team's best and our own best as well to Jeannie Havercroft. <laughs> Justin Detman, a guy who uh, as a senior has really blossomed. We'll talk a little bit more about him and his trip through Seattle when we come back. Huskies lead it by nine. It's a 25 to 16 ball game. We've been talking about Justin Detman and what he's meant to this team, not just this year, but he came on the scene with a splash. He was the point guard as a freshman, only averaged eight points a game, not bad, but he wasn't asked to do much shooting. And now look at him, 15.1 over the season, 18 points a game here as a senior, and he's in that shooting guard position. And he can thank, of course, his teammates, Isaiah Thomas and Benoit Overton, for just freeing him up so that he can look to shoot the basketball. Oh, he's made huge strides, and of course, Justin Justin Deppman, you, you saw the season there over 15 a game, Barry, but as you said, in the conference, he's at 18 a game. So improvement every year with Justin Deppman and uh, just having a sensational year for Washington. Well, we've seen him, of course, for these four years. We remember when his freshman year when his mom came out to see him from Carbondale, Illinois. First time she'd ever been on an airplane. Very exciting moment for him and for her. He is one of 11 children, one of one 11. of 11. So you know what else he does? You know what else he does that's really impressive? He writes poetry. He's used to sharing. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. That's, right. that's right. The true point guard mentality, although he's not really playing the point right now. Well, remember, he did when Brandon Roy was here. Yes, he, he, he took a lot of responsibility. Then, then Roy said, I'll take the ball. <laughs> okay. And the rest is history. He's still taking it. He's still taking it. You bet. Huskies already have been to the free throw line 10 times. You talk about the fact that they shoot a lot of free throws. Eight of 10 at the line. This is critical. And another turnover. Four on two. Thomas in the middle. Leave oh. behind him. Back to Thomas. Now on top of that. Brian Amening. Denman finishes. <laughs> Put it to highlight film. How do you like it? Wow. Biggest lead of the ball game. Longmire at the other end. Can't get it. Elston Turner gets it out of there. How about that ball? Well, we were talking yesterday at practice how crisp they passed the basketball. Second timeout. And I'm not sure Ernie's got an answer here. He's had to be, you can see him talking to Criddle. Criddle's another one of his freshmen, Washington on a 7 0 run. And Ernie Kent has said, you know, I, I have to be a teacher. I, I, we were kidding him last time we saw him about, you know, if he were if he were a teacher, he'd have tenure by this time. Well, let's take a moment for the HTC Fuse timeout. The HTC Fuse has full internet, which allows access to FoxSports.com. All the scores, all the highlights. Grab a video highlight from today's game and share it live during calls. Open, edit, save, and send emails and attachments. The HTC Fuse experience the reaction. 16-point ball game right now, and watch this pass. Now, I, I like this one. A little <laughs> between the legs, and then look at the ball moving. One, two, three, four touches, and then go ahead, Deadman, make a three. Well, that was sweet. Here's the between the legger right here. 
And that was really easily done. You know, I mean, some of a, a little showboatish, but it's not. He, he just made an open court play and then nice rotation with the passing and Detman with the, with the three. Done a good job on Porter in this game too, Barry. He's, you know, they've really gotten up on Porter. He made one go into the goal, yeah. but nothing much on the outside. They're gonna get Pondexter. Pondexter and Longmire really having a physical battle that time away from the ball. First personal on Pondexter. So now shooting situation here. And then Kendrick Longmire will go to the free throw line. Found his way to Eugene, Oregon from Pascagoula, Mississippi. Not a lot of nonstop flights, I'll tell you that. Longmire, a sophomore, and, and on this team is a senior citizen. Only Churchill Odia, a senior, Catron, a junior. And when you look down everybody else, Tawan Porter is a junior, but everybody else, freshmen and sophomores. One out of two. There's Thomas. Thomas just that little start and stop and gets it up and in. And once again, I mean, that's stuff that cannot be coached. What you love about Isaiah, he sees, he sees the crease in the defense, right? And you think, well, he's in trouble. No, he's not. He hangs, and he is so strong for a guy about 5'10", that he not only gets it up, Barry, he can finish plays. That, that's why this, this guy's such a great player. He's going to be around for another three years, just a freshman. Thomas has eight points, hasn't missed a shot, and has three assists in the game. Not bad. Trying to get it to Pondexter and see if he can make the play. Well, they do. He's working on Churchill Odia. Got it up. Couldn't quite finish it. Odia gets it out of there for Oregon. And a travel. Another Oregon turnover. Another freshman mistake. And you know who caused that travel? Vinoy Overton. Anticipation defensively to get in the way. And Oregon did not catch and look. And Ernie Kent frustrated, but a great play by Overton. You know, this Washington team, they're, they're really starting to play like a team that believes they can beat anybody. That time again, Thomas got in the air, hung, and drew the foul. Longmire picks up the foul, his second. And they play very unselfish. They got so many guys that can step up. Pondexter can step up. Any one of the guards can step up. Brockman, of course, can step up. They don't rely on any one guy. So as a coach, coaching against them, what do you do? Lately, Barry, they've been super successful without Brockman scoring a lot of points. That tells you how good they are, right? Well, what you do is, if, if you're playing the Huskies, you've got, if, you have to make an attempt to negate their backcourt. And their backcourt is devastating, but you cannot allow penetration when you're playing Washington. Well, and then as soon as you get down off them to prevent the penetration, they got a bunch of guys who could shoot the tray. That's why they're in first place. Yeah, that would explain <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't know if the rooting section is uh, affecting Oregon, but it's making me seasick. This is Gant. I'll drop down off Gant and let him take that shot. And there's a foul once again, just stepping in on Dunnigan. Dunnigan will learn. First foul on Dunnigan. Well, you mentioned the growth of Quincy Pondex. Remember as a freshman? I do. Out of control yep. in many cases. Even last year, just, you know, coming of age, but still not solid. This year, I mean, great numbers. He's rebounding the ball. Look what he's done over the last three games. And 
you know, he's a young man that's really smooth and efficient. Seven points today, three rebounds, and of course, the seven points, two or three field goals. So, he, you know, he's efficient and not shooting the ball a lot. Yeah, he's really become a complete player. And he spent a lot of time on the pine because he was a little out of control as a freshman. But he's accepted it. He, he's, he's become a better player. Yeah, he's a nice young guy. Very shy. Yep. You know, not like demonstrative, but he comes up. Hi, sir. How are you? You know, he's, 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 he's really a, a very good all-around guy. Dunnigan tries to drive baseline. Brockman got a body on him, but Dunnigan put it right up and over it. So Dunnigan has had his moments in this game. It's the future for Oregon right there. That was a heck of a move by Michael Dunnigan. He's made a few in this game. And I think you're going the other way there. I think so. Offensive foul on Pondexter. Got him with the off arm. Let's take a look for just a moment and uh, take a look at our dreams realized. Brought to you by World Financial Group. Sociology major, favorite class is Swahili. So, jumbo to Quincy Pondexter. It's the only word of Swahili I know. Few people do know that he's shy. You and I know that he is, because we talked to him. And he, as you said, you know, he's a little reticent, but he'll come over and chat you up. So, World Financial Group, your dreams are strategies. Saw Barry's biggest influence was his dad, Roscoe. Roscoe, a great player in his own right, along with his uncle Clifton. They both played at San Joaquin Memorial and went to Long Beach State with that great Long Beach State team in the early 70s and played professional basketball also. Yeah, and both he and, and uh, Roscoe, Roscoe really looks like he could go out and play tomorrow. So does Clifton. Yeah, both. Meantime, the game has been played at the tempo that the Huskies like and in just about every respect like the Huskies like. This is Overton working on Porter. And there was that screen by Dunnigan. Porter still can't find it. And going to get a foul on Criddle. Maybe a double foul. We'll take a timeout with 358 remaining, a 19 point Washington lead. Well, the Huskies lead it by 19, still three minutes, 58 seconds remaining to be played here in the first half. John Brockman, five rebounds in this ball game, starting to get himself some elite company. Mel Counts, all time Pac 10 leader from Oregon State. Remember this guy? Oh, pretty good player. Yeah, pretty good player, Bill Walton. Speaking of good players, Barry, there's probably. I think this this uh, Lou Alcindor was uh, three three NCAA championships at UCLA and John Brockman as we said starting to get in that kind of company he's got five as we said today Mel Count's one of the first seven footers that I can remember back in the days when there weren't a lot and you remember Mel Counts took Oregon State to the final four that's right back in the 60 1963 64 and the starting guard on that team was Dave Gamby. No, okay. Dave Gamby was a forward. Thank you. The starting guard before they could play on that team. <laughs> the starting guard, he, he was a he was a football player. Oh yes, I do. Terry Baker. You're right. That is correct. That's correct. Terry still comes around. We'll see him down in Corvallis every now and then. I'd say he was a pretty good football player, as a matter of fact. Yeah. I'll say a nice trophy one. Huskies will maintain possession. Well, we talked about Oregon having to bang on the boards, and they have just not been able to do that. Well, they've, they've almost doubled up, and a pretty good pass on the inbound. 19 to 10 on the rebounds, Barry, for the Huskies. That's why they're one of the leading rebounding teams in the country. Porter steps in, draws a crowd. This time, Porter with a good one. Behind the screen, puts it on the floor again, draws a crowd. Now Odia. Well defended. And that's a travel. Yep. So again, a very good defensive set by the Huskies. The Huskies, because they score so much, there's a tendency to overlook how well they play defense. On, 
I'm sure they'd love to get Brockman a few more scores. <laughs> they haven't really needed it, you know, and he's missed a few inside. See if they just dump it right down to him here. They're trying. Well, Holiday at the free throw line had a good look, couldn't finish it. Dunnigan with a rebound for the Oregon Ducks. Holiday Barry had Brockman for a drop if he looked around the goal that time. Porter all the way, draws a foul, will go to the line. And when Porter goes to the line, you could almost put it in the scorebook. Oregon has only scored three points in the last five minutes. And to Juan Porter, a 90% free throw shooter. You can see a little slump as a sophomore. But his freshman head, of course, just as we say, what a prolific free throw shooter he is. He bangs one off the back iron. And, and does not lead the conference in free throw shooting. No, that, of course, is Collison at 93%. Oh, that's unbelievable. That, that, too. that just doesn't happen. And it hasn't done that probably since the fifth grade. <laughs> I think it's us. Jump out on Detman, and we're going to get a foul from behind. Odia, I think, is going to get called for a grab on Brockman. Second foul on Churchill Odia. John Brockman will go to the free throw line. And Elston Turner. They'll come into the Washington lineup. Daytona 500 coming up. Big weekend, although the forecast is for heavy rain. There was some talk that perhaps could get rained out. Sockman gets them both. And a 21-point Huskies lead. And already Oregon has five players that have at least two fouls, and two have three. That's Porter, the smallest man on the floor, gets it up and gets it down. What a great rebound by Porter. Follow his own shot and get him right back in there. Well, the Huskies, they're just dictating tempo now. They're running their motion, they're looking in, they're passing up a few shots. This is where they'd like to get the ball is the Brock. And here he is, worked on by the smaller Odia. Gant has a great look. Knocks it down the bottom of the net. All right, Brock, what a heck of a pass. Well, you said it earlier. This is a, it's an unselfish team that's looking to pass first before they shoot. And they pass the ball so well. And the other thing I like about them, they can beat you in so many ways. They can beat you low, they can beat you high, they can beat you in transition. And they're not uncomfortable if you want to play it in the 50s or 60s either. That's Sim. Overton penetrate left hand. Hey, that looked pretty easy. Yeah, he sure did. I thought he might come with the right, but no. And the one thing Ernie Kent cannot be happy about is the amount of penetration by the Huskies. They, they are just taking it to the goal almost every time. Now they're going to discuss who called the timeout. They're going to look back on this shot by Sim. They call this shot a two. And they might have an argument here for a three. Well, you get a good look at it, Barry. It looks like a three to me. Yeah, it's hard to tell from this angle. Uh, I think that's a pretty good angle. I, I, I think it's a three. I think three's the right call. Well, coming up at halftime, going to preview the Stanford Cal game. That's coming up a little bit later. And, of course, we'll look back on this half, a half that has been dominated by the hometown Washington Huskies, the first place Washington Huskies. Cal and Stanford always one of the great rivalries. And you know, we, we talked, Washington, Washington State certainly is a rivalry, but Oregon, Washington is maybe even a more heated kind of rivalry, especially on the football field, but it does carry over to basketball as well. Steal by Denton and a race to the basket. No contest. They flushed 
Boston. Boy, that surprised me. I thought he was going to lay it in. How about it? Got the crowd going. Sin the other way. Missed the three. Odia push off. Third foul on Odia. Watch the steal. Great overplay by Dentman. And watch the flush. <laughs> why the Huskies are where they are. Their defense keys their offense. Opportunistic in the passing lane. And the other thing you notice, Barry, they finish. I mean, when, when they take it in in the open court, they normally, are, they normally make it right. So Austin Turner will go to the free throw line. Double bonus. Now Turner's another guy that can score. He doesn't get a lot of minutes from Lorenzo Romo, but again, a very talented freshman. I know everybody's going to waiting for the Stanford Cal game and we were there the first time when Stanford beat Cal and Naples. So Mike Montgomery and, and then the Bears looking for a little bit of a revenge game. And it's a big game for both teams. You know Stanford wants to get back in the mix again. And they need to win. It's going to be tough at Berkeley. Yeah, I think so. Very balanced scoring for the Washington Huskies. Demon has 12. Thomas has 10. Bondaxter has 8. All nine Huskies who have played have scored in this game. Clearly loses himself, but missed everything. But Duncan's all alone if they find him. They found him. That time, was two Huskies on the floor. A little tough to recover defensively. Thought a solid first half, though, by Michael Dunnigan. He's been, yeah, a, bright, he's been yeah. a bright spot. He really has. Dunnigan's got 10 points and five rebounds in the first half. Now Devin. We'll bring it out here. Eight on the shot clock. Eight on the game clock. And Detman just puts it up. Scores just that easy. Perfect timing. You do with about three seconds left. And <laughs> Was the first half comes to an end. Any doubt? No. Just a sensational first half of basketball played by the hometown Washington Huskies. And they lead it at the half by a lot. 24. 49 Huskies, 25 Ducks at the intermission. And we're coming back. One out of two for LaKendrick Longmire. See if Oregon presses now, three-quarter court. Good job to get the ball in the middle into the Huskies. This is Overton. He brings Matt Humphrey out with him. And a grab. See who they get. They're going to get Longmire. I mean, the third foul on Longmire. Tempo of this game is slowed appreciably. Here's Overton. Drop it down for Brian Amening. Nice pass by Overton, but Rockman picks up the loose ball. Bodies going everywhere. And I, th <laughs> I think they're going to call this on Churchill Odia. Top foul on Odia. Sure is. And Fine. that's his fourth. Yeah. And he's a real hard foul. Odia may have been reaching in, but Dunnigan took one right in the chest. Yeah, he did. Boy, they just put the ball right on the ball. Good block there. Yeah. Good block by Longmire. Or Dunnigan, one of the two. Longmire coming baseline, has it rejected by Brian Amonick. Well, I like to play going to the goal and, and a good block by Amity to come over. And I think the players are kind of woofing at each other and the officials are getting them together saying, calm down. Yeah, a good officiating crew here and they're doing just that. And the out of bounds, you got to really defend Tawan Porter, number 12. Got to find him wherever, wherever he is. There he is. Did a great job to get between those screens. Sure did. Sure did. Throw. First three point make of the game for the Oregon Ducks. Brockman down low, got Dunnigan in the air, count it and one. That's a mistake Dunnigan will not make next year. All right, th this, this is the last, the last time down. This is the last time down. A good job by Tawan Porter to get through screens and, and, and make the three. So a nice effort by Porter. They screen for him. He comes around. 
and he drills the three-point shot. Porter's got 13 points, been a quiet 13 points, but he'll take them. Rockman converts the three-point play. And now Rockman's got 12. This is Matt Humphrey. Humphrey puts it on the floor. I think Brian Amity might have got a hand on that. Here's Vinoy Overton. Overton leaves for Justin Holiday. Holiday is hammered from behind. And I think they're going to say it's on the line. The ball went on the line. As such, it's going to be Oregon basketball. And now we have a discussion. Now they're going to change it. Jimmy Jerron saw it one way. Bob Stafford saw it another way. And it's going to be Husky ball. They left Brian Avening wide open now. They drop it to him down low. And he can't quite score. Gets it back, tries again, comes up short again. And still chases it down, tries to save. And he hits it about five rows up into the stand. So this time it will be Oregon ball. Incidentally, John Brockman for the 54th time has come up with a double-double, 12 points, 10 rebounds. It, you know, just kind of a blue-collar journeyman kind of job. John's had some great chances, Barry, to score around the basket. He hasn't been able to do it. Justin Holiday will leave for the Huskies, and Pondexter will come back. This is Cameron Brown. Brown cut off. Nice lead for Porter. Porter. Leaves it for Matt Humphrey with a good look, and he can't get it. Had a wide open look at it. Brockman ahead to Pondexter to the basket. Gonna get a hand check on Vanoy Overton here. Well, here's what Brockman can really bring to the table, too. He's, I mean, he's a great passer in traffic, and of course, Pondexter on a run out and an easy score. Now, if you're Oregon, obviously, you got to make that transition defense. Can't give up any of those easy scores in the open court. Here again, it's it's been kind of a typical Washington Husky line. They have four players in double figures now, and we still have almost 13 minutes to play in the game. Porter behind a screen, and now he's got it going. I'll tell you what, he's a guy he don't want to let get going. Great out of bounds plays by the Ducks. Two out of bounds plays gets Porter shots. Yeah. Here's Elston Turner. Had a wide open shot, let it go. Gives it up to Matthew Bryan Avening. And again, he misses. He still can't find it. He's getting very good looks. You, you know, Porter's going to look for him. Got the bigger Porter on him. Now, Criddle. There's Odia. Cameron Brown open three. And all of a sudden, the Oregon Ducks trying to find the range here. And they're within 17. I know that doesn't sound like much, but they're kind of pecking away here. Blocking great block out the putback. What position, huh? Oh, they're gonna get a block. <laughs> oh dear. I think started to fall before Overton got him. Nonetheless, it will be a foul against Washington. We're coming back. Look at the Rock and Roll Museum here in Seattle. 67-48 ball game. The hometown Huskies leading the Oregon Ducks. The Ducks chipping away a little bit. We're old for their first 10 from beyond the arc, but have made their last three. Matt Humphrey will go to the free throw line. Porter on the bench, although I suspect it will be a short blow for Tawan. Oregon is outscored. UW 23 to 18 in the second half. Barry, it's a great job by Tawan Porter to score as much he's scoring for a guy that's targeted. I, I mean, you said in practice, everybody, we're trying to find Tawan Porter. You don't want to give him open looks. Every team he faces, 
that's the kind of defense they're playing against, and yet he's putting up numbers. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, the fact is that Oregon has not had a lot of scoring power besides Tawan Porter, so teams figure if they can take him out of the game, they're going to have a pretty good chance of winning. Going to get Matt Humphrey a little too aggressive that time. Gant will go to the free throw line. He's going to jump at him. And again, he's a freshman. First foul on Matt Humphrey, and it gets him a seat on the bench. Gant, another freshman, and, and we talked about role players on this Washington team, and, and here's the definitive role player. He's there to rebound. Well, while he's there to rebound, <clears throat> what I've noticed, Barry, he's starting to shoot the 15-footer yes, with confidence. Yes, you know, he's a guy has got a pretty good rotation on the ball. Yeah. One. And a good defender. He's long. Yeah, Darnell Gant is a, actually a redshirt freshman out of Crenshaw. In Los Angeles. by Thomas and he couldn't get it to fall loose ball scramble bodies everywhere and let's see what our call is there's still no call from the officials I want to remind you you know we talk about the Cal Stanford men's game as being a great rivalry how about this game coming up later tonight it's the game of the year there's no question about it in the Pac-10 conference amongst the women Ashley Walker and the Cal Bears, Jay Napel and the Stanford Cardinal. They're playing at Stanford. Cal beat them the last time at Berkeley. That's the only loss for either of those two teams in the Pac-10 Conference. Two outstanding teams, nationally ranked, good players. That's got to be great viewing. Well, right now, let's take a moment to show you the Best Buy, Best Connection. And this was the one that we showed you at halftime, too. Watch Isaiah Thomas between, <laughs> between the legs, the, the legs. trailer. Five players touch the ball, and it finishes with a three. Yeah, great, great rotation here, and definitely knocks it down. But Thomas made it happen. Best Buy, Best Connection. And it was. Detman, as you see, the number's on him, 16 points. and. You know, again, he's taken 11 shots. He's made six. He's kind of waited for the game to come to him, and that's one of the things about this Washington team that, that you got to like. I mean, they're unselfish. Any one of a number of guys can step up. It's been a real team effort so far here today. Well, they only have two road games left. That's right. At, at UCLA, at USC. Sim. And Ernie Kent has talked about what a good shooter Sim is. And he showed us that today. Ernie wants him to shoot a little bit more. Oregon has made its last four three-point shots after missing its first 11. This is going to put Thomas at the free throw line. Call the foul on Garrett Sim. It's the ninth team foul on the Oregon, so we're talking about the fact that Washington gets the free throw line a lot. And here with more than 10 minutes remaining in the ball game, the next foul will put the Huskies to the line for a pair. Denton will leave, and Vinoy Overton will come back for Washington. Rebound. They're going to get Gant over the top. And it's going to be a one and one. Kind of foul you certainly don't want to make if you're the Huskies. Third foul on Gant. A little bit overzealous there of Gant going after that missed shot.
Oregon trying to make a little run here. You, know, you, you kind of get the feeling in the second half, they've been solid. They've made some three-point shots. I mean, the game's not totally out of reach. Now, obviously, you get, you've got to make free throws to get back in it. And their traps have been effective in the half court. Yeah. Yeah, Washington not getting nearly as many good looks as they did. And the penetration not quite the same either. I think the Huskies got to get a little more proactive. Go to the goal a little bit more, try to open the game up. Got pushed out to block, but he lost it, but it's picked up behind him by Pondexter. He can't get it to go. Gant in traffic. Four ducks there, and Gant dribbles out of it. There's Thomas driving on Porter, kicks back for uh, Overton. Now Pondexter. Pondexter drives by Catron into the lane, puts it up, can't score, but it'll go to the line. Great ball movement. Good job to put the ball around the perimeter and allow some penetration, but again, unselfish Washington looking for the opportunity shot. Well, here's your difference right here. Look, look at this graphic, Barry. Washington, 24 of 31. 31 of 32 attempts. Well, we said that at the very beginning. This is a team that gets to the line a lot. The other significant aspect of Washington's game this year, they've improved their free throw shooting. They were not a very good free throw shooting team last year and actually the year before. And there's a, there's a reason for that, which we'll tell you about in just a moment. So we get a chance, there's another turnover. Washington 25 to 33 tonight. Thomas to the basket at the left hand and one. What we're talking about is they run a drill called the ladder drill. It was actually Jim Shaw, one of the assistant coaches for Lorenzo Romar, who sits on the bench right now, right next to Lowe. And what they do is they line up everybody on all around the free throw lane. And when they shoot one and ones, you got to make all the team that is has to make 19 out of 24. And they will do it over and over and over again until they make 19 of 24. They said sometimes the drill takes 45 minutes. I would bet it even took longer than that earlier in the year. I'm sure it did. And it has drastically improved their free throw shooter. Porter, long oh, three. How about Porter? Porter with 19. Thomas, nice lead for Brockman. Brockman will go to the line. I mean, the Huskies take it at you. Not that the ladder drill, Barry, is something unique, but, you know, credit Jim Shaw of, to bring it up and say, you know, let's try something different. So if you got to make 19 of 24, it puts pressure. It's pressure on every guy going up there. you got to make the shot. And if you don't make it, maybe you end up running or, or you have some other deterrent that uh, will allow you to concentrate. That's, right. more. That's when they, they practice one-on-ones, when they practice two shots. They have the same drill that they work on for two shots. Then they got to make 20 or 24. Last five, Oregon. Field goals have been three pointers and they need all they can get. A lot of fouls in this game. Overton has picked up his fourth. Dunnigan on the bench with four. Catron on the floor with four. And Idea on the bench with four also. afternoon for Juan Porter. TP missed a couple of free throws. Barry. Yeah, he did in this game. But you see what he's shooting for the year at nine. So he's trying to kind of build that back up. He's four of six. He did miss those two. He's made everything else. 21 on the day. Overton going to come out. He's got the four fouls. Well, if it, if it was like a 20 shot free throw attempt, Oregon would be ahead. They would be. <laughs> they just keep right. Porter at the line. A real battle on the block again. Brockman gets it over the top, puts it up, and scores. Well, Brockman was pretty quiet early. He's now got 18 points. Check that 17 points to go with 14 rebounds.
quarter. Good look for three. He's got another one. And he's on fire. Porter's putting on a show this I'll afternoon. Say got off to a slow start, but he's in gear right now. Man, that was a bomb by oh Porter. He's got 25 points in the game. Now, Barry, this is distance right here. Check Porter when he comes around the screen and drills the long range three. Good job by TP to get that one up. I know he feels it. He's in rhythm. He wants the ball. So he's got 25 in the game and 19 of them, Danny, have come in the second half. And there's still a long way to go. Still eight minutes and change. Brockman knocks that down. Now Dunnigan's going to come back into the ball game as Ernie Kent feels he's got to have him out there, especially on the offensive end. But he's playing with four fouls. Brockman gets them both. He's got 19. I would say Det Detman better be alert because you know the Porter's going to look for it when he gets it. And a turnover. Here's Thomas in the middle to the basket. Couldn't quite get it up and in that time, but he will go to the line for two. We'll take a timeout with 7.49 remaining to be played. 79-61 dogs. Huskies lead it by 18, 79 to 61 ball game. Here's where we are in the Pac-10. Washington should increase its lead over Arizona State and UCLA. UCLA, of course, losing at Arizona. And how about Zona? They're eight and five. California and Stanford just about to tip it off at Berkeley. The Bears, seven and four, can join a crowd in second place. Thomas will shoot two, and you can see we, we keep talking about what they've done at the free throw line. Big improvement for the Washington Huskies, and that's fortunate for Lorenzo Romar because they get there so much. And here's what we're talking about, too. We keep talking about Justin Dentman and his scoring and what he does for this team, and maybe he's the most valuable player in the league. Well, today, Thomas has got 20, and Brockman's got 19. And, and Porter's got Porter. 28. He's got 28. What a second half by Tawan Porter. I'll say he's got 22 in the second half. Now the zone. And a steal. Garrett Sim comes away with it. And Sim is going to take it all the way. And he put it up a little hard with the right hand. Catron gets it back and scores. And don't look now, but it's a 15-point ball game. Well, the trap and the, and, the, and the extension of the defense is beneficial for Oregon because Washington's not going to the basket. They're just going to set it up, run their motion, try to get a quality shot, but then they do score. With Pondexter, who did get a quality shot. Back the other way, and Dunnigan. A great pass by Porter. Just a beautiful look. Wide open is Holiday. Passed up the shot. And a turnover. Here comes Porter. See if he takes the opportunity. Give it up on the wing to send to the basket short. And Holiday with a rebound. Right there's a lack of strength for Sim. That, that's a play he's got to go ahead and broad jump to the goal and drop it. Pondexter and Dunnigan comes over to help. Pondexter got right around and lays it in. Nice effort by Quincy Pondexter. And that time Porter with another long three, but long threes make for long rebounds, and Sim answers with a three from the right side. Well, you can see the upside with Sim. Got to get a little bit stronger, but very good rotation on the shot. Oh, the middle is wide open. We'll find Pondexter, number 20. If he can just come to the ball, like right there, that's a pretty good play to turn and look. Thomas, little pump fake. Nice leave that time. 
Going to get the reach in on Katron. That's going to be his fifth foul. And Pondexter will go to the line. Now, Sam Tawan Porter has been on fire in the second half. He had six at the half. He's got 33 now. And he's seven of nine from three-point range. And look, look at the distance and, and, and the ability for Tawan Porter to get open. A quick shot. And what a big second half. 27 in the second half for Tawan Porter. His season high, Barry, 33. Career high, 38 he had against Portland State a couple of years ago. So Tuan Porter, I mean, still 324 to go. I think that was the first game he played. So Isaiah Thomas will go to the line for a pair. One more for Thomas. Thomas is a very good three-point shooter himself, has not attempted a three-point shot. And he has 23 points, 22 points. Huskies, as a team, haven't attempted very many three-point shots. No, they haven't. The six, they made two, both by Denton. And has got Brockman on him, and he leaves it for Dunnigan, and Dunnigan's going to draw a foul. Well, the Huskies keep fouling here and allowing Oregon to score with without the clock moving. Double bonus situation now for Dunnigan. Got to go all the way back to to Juan Porter's freshman year to find another time that he had more than 30. He did it in an NCAA tournament game against Las Vegas. And that Portland State game was the first game that he played as a, a member of the Oregon Ducks. And I think he opened some eyes there. Yeah, I sure did. <clears throat> Better guard this. I was just going to say. <laughs> that again can't get either to go. On next week. Detman, long three, and he's got another one. Well, Detman doesn't shoot him often, but when he shoots him, he makes him. Here's Porter the other way, a little short, and Brockman hauls in another rebound. And a turnover, and Longmire throws it up and was fouled somewhere. Wasn't anybody Dittman, around him? Well, shot I, I, no, I think Detman, Detman may have stepped in and got him. And if it's dead, then it may be his fifth. Yeah, they, there's the foul. Good call. They def definitely hit him on the wrist. Fourth foul on Jordan. So Longmire will shoot two. Stayed in this press almost the whole second half, and they did get turnovers off it. They did. Now back in the zone. Suggs comes baseline, leaves to Brockman, back and scores. Yeah, beautiful pass by Suggs. How about this, Danny? We talk about the balance of Washington. They have four players with 20 or more points in this ball game, and they've hit a season high at 98 here. Thomas has 22, Detman has 21, Pondexter 20, and Brockman 21. Coming up next in most regions, Stanford and Cal from Berkeley should be a great one. Thomas the other way. And they got 100, and there's still two minutes to play. I think, too, Barry, if you're Ernie Ken, I thought his team, the second half, really came out and played well. Played hard. It's a young team. It's going to take time. It's frustrating to go through this, but you, you've got to have some patience with the Oregon Ducks. Absolutely. 
Well, we want to remind you that the Pac-10 tournament should truly be a great one, and you have a chance to win two tickets to the 2009 Pacific Life Pac-10 Men's Basketball Tournament at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Takes place March 11th through the 14th. To enter, go to www.pac-10.org and simply click on the entry link for your chance to win a couple of ducats to the Pac-10 tournament. Really should be a great event. Yeah, it should be, and uh, could be a lot of upsets in that Pac-10 tournament, that Pacific Life Pac-10 tournament. Barry, take a look at those standings right now. The balance, of course, is tremendous. SC, they're kind of on the bubble right oh, now. I, I think Washington, Arizona State, UCLA, Cal, Arizona, all in the tournament. I think USC has a shot to get in, no question about it. But, but got to do a little bit of business down the stretch. I think the Pac-10 will get six teams in the NCAA tournament. Artem Wallace will come into the ball game now as uh, Lorenzo Romar gets the back of his bench. Now, Wallace was a very productive player. He was a starter for part of last season, but he had a very serious knee injury and by his own admission has not been able to recover and lost a lot of mobility. But he's out there gutsing it out. He works hard at practice every day. And now he's going to get a couple of minutes. Well, what's a shame about Artem? He, he was injured in the last, almost the last play of the last game for the Huskies. Remember, they went to the newly founded college basketball invitational, Barry. That was a postseason tournament, not the NCAA, not the NIT. They have third, third tournament. By the way, they're going to have a fourth tournament this year. Yes, that's right. There's going to be another one. But that's where Artem got hurt. And it's really a shame because uh, it, it took a lot out of him. He, he's never really ever recovered back to full strength. And then I think they ought to have a tournament for all those teams who didn't get in the tournament. <laughs> and there aren't that many of them. So Oregon still in search of what has been a very elusive first win in the Pac-10 Conference. Joe Wolfinger, they wanted him to shoot it. Suggs will take it. As we said, Suggs Joe Wilmar feels a lot about Suggs. Yeah. Feels that he's going to be a very productive player, as we said earlier. He's known him since he was about 10 years old. First time he saw him, he played basketball in his driveway. His Suggs' dad is a friend of Lorenzo Romar's from St. Louis. And Lowe said, I could still beat him. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> he thinks in his mind he could still beat him. That's, that's true. Can't. Suggs made a good pass earlier and, and makes a nice little jumper. He is smooth. So now the clock just kind of ticking down. Artem Wallace gets a shot and Dunnigan fouls him. That's going to be the fifth foul on Dunnigan. I'm not sure that's what Ernie Kent really wanted. Well, Dunnigan had a very productive game. He finishes with 14 points and eight rebounds. You know, in a game that makes you think this guy really does have a big upside. Artem Wallace will go to the free throw line. Artem was born in uh, St. Petersburg in Russia and was adopted by a family here in the Pacific Northwest in Toledo, Washington. Now Ernie Kent letting uh, some players who don't get a lot of minutes get a couple minutes here too as John Elriaga will play. <laughs> Sim drops down another three for the Ducks. There's Suggs. He'll kick out. Joe Wolfinger. He'll take it. He's a good shooter from there, but he couldn't get that one. 45 seconds remaining in the game now. That's Elriaga. That will get him in the scorebook. Oh, that was a nice little transition three. And he's he got another one. Look at this. Give it up. Give it up to Humphrey. And Humphrey couldn't finish Porter. He'll back it out and throw it up there. No, he was going to let Oriago shoot it. Now Sim. Wallace with the rebound. 20 seconds left. Huskies do not have to take another shot. 103 to 84. Going to be the final score in this one. And Oregon will remain without a victory in the Pac 10 conference. And Washington puts the most points on the Ducks 
that they ever have in a long, long history. And I think really this is more about how good Washington is than how bad Oregon is. Huskies win this one. Final score once more, 103 to 84 for my partner, Dan Delamity. I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.